When we left off, I had just used the lasso to roughly cut out and place some of these objects. The first thing you want to do is get rid of the rectangle of the layers that you bring in, those hard edges. So for instance, this reference is really interesting because it can be manipulated just slightly. I'm going to use my transform tools here and warp it. It can be manipulated so that it actually matches pretty well with that mountain range and with this mountain range. And I have quite a bit of overlap between that ice and those mountains. That's some of the, the fun things that can happen with compositing. It completely changes it. So instead of there being a frozen lake in the middle ground, now there's that kind of ravine and cavern that I was hoping for in the middle ground. And it's just made to look like a massive scale because what was just close up ice is now gonna be mountains. But you can see that this hard edge is a big problem. So what I can do is get rid of the straights by just using my lasso. And I'm just gonna use my, my mouse. And I'm just gonna make it a little irregular here. Just lasso out part of it. It's already been rasterized. And then hit delete. And I'm almost kind of drawing the snowpack shapes just by how I cut it out. But the main thing, whether you're using a hard, a hard edge like I am with the lasso, or whether you're using a soft edge like I did with the erasers, the soft edge erasers last class, do some hard edge cutting out here, we're getting rid of that default edge of our reference. Right? Sometimes you want it hard edge, sometimes you don't. And the closer we get to the, the foreground, and especially in the middle ground where we want most of our focus to be in these landscapes to get those three layers of depth, the more useful it is to be able to have harder edges. And what, why it's really nice to composite with organic material is you can kind of follow the organic shapes on down. And if you go too far, you can always go back in your history or hit Command Z. And I'm pretty much creating organic mountain forms here just by how I cut it out. And then I can fine tune it later. Okay, so that's hard edged cutouts. I think all this gets covered up. Yeah, so I'm not going to worry too much about that yet. And then for soft edged cutouts, I recommend using the eraser tool instead of the lasso. And then under the tool options for the eraser, setting it pretty large, I'm at about 100 pixels there. At a 0% hardness, at 100% opacity, 100% flow, 0% smoothing, basically all the defaults. But it's very important that it's a 100% opacity because you don't want to leave a little ghost of that hard edge at all. If you can help it. And then when you do want to bleed softly in, especially as we get to the background, like these back mountains, you can see how that, that soft edge is created pretty believably, or that's 100% soft eraser. 
And I start just by playing with the edge. Even though it's a big, soft eraser. Okay, so now I've got four layers creating my image. I guess five layers if you count the layered up sky. So that's one, that's two, that's three, that's four, that's five. But I definitely want another foreground element here. I found this glacier, which I liked quite a bit. Because it's such a sharp edged foreground element, this I can use my magic wand to select instead of trying to use my lasso to get close. And I'm going to choose contiguous in my options at a tolerance of 32, which is the default. And then I just click on that, that black that I hope will just disappear when I hit delete. It's going to leave a little bit of a halo. which can then be cleaned up by hand. And sometimes with, with the lasso tool, it's just very, very sharp. You can see the pixels very clearly there. And so sometimes it can be nice, instead of just using the lasso with all the defaults, with a zero pixel feather, I'm gonna go back before I use the magic wand, and I'm gonna go to my lasso tool and I'm going to put in just a four pixel feather. Four pixels doesn't seem like a lot, especially when you're working in high resolution, but it will make a difference as to how hard this edge is and how much of that halo is left. So now when I go to the magic wand and I select it, the edge will be slightly feathered. And if I go to a select and mask in the options, I can play with that feather just for the lasso tool. So feathering makes it so your, your selections are less exact and softer edged, whether you're using the lasso or whether you're using the feathering options. I'll do four pixel feather here with the, um, the magic wand. So I'm going to feather it and keep the radius about four pixels as well. So it's going to work to detect the edge within four pixels and then feather around that edge by four pixels. Uh, and then I should say remember settings because that's basically how I'll always use these settings. When I want it soft, that's about how soft I want it. And it just saves me the effort of having to go in by hand and clean up all that halo. But whatever practice you get, it's all, all helpful. Now the problem with some of these property filters that are live processing is they can take a while for the computer, as you can see. So sometimes it's easiest just to directly affect the pixels. But all of these are options we have. All right, so that's what that four pixel feather does. And even just at four pixels, you can see it moved it quite a bit. So let's try that magic wand again. Now with the select and mask, let's see if it remembered. No, so I'm gonna say remember settings, four pixel radius, four pixel feather, maybe a three pixel feather. I don't wanna use a clipping mask.
just won't let me apply the feather on this new version unless I do a clipping mask. So instead, I'll show you how that, that feathering works on the, on the lasso itself. So now this will help with the four pixel feather as I select it out to clean it up. You see how it softens it as it cuts away. If I have a zero pixel feather, it's just gonna cut right through the pixels. And it can be a lot harsher. So you decide for the textures you're doing, for what you're overlapping, how much of a feather you might want. I'm gonna try maybe a two pixel feather for this. And because it's organic, I don't even need to match the shape all that well. And the feather makes it a little bit more forgiving. But the feather also makes it so it erases away kind of in a blurry, soft opacity way. So you have to click more than once often to get rid of all the traces. And in older version, versions of Photoshop and in Photo P, you can just do a refinement to your magic wand selection without having to create a separate clipping mask. And since I'm trying to avoid getting into clipping masks with you, because they're not directly affecting the pixels, I'm just going to avoid using it in this version. But it's always something you could research and we can talk about individually if you want to try to add that to your skill set. Remember, when you cut away, whenever you have a selection, you can also use your arrow keys to move that selection. Should you want to use it in another way in a different place. So you can see the difference between that kind of edge, where it has lots of little blue halo, and my more finished edge, which is using a two pixel feather. So before I, I clean it up in earnest, I'll just use the rough cutout, and now I want to place it. And I don't need it quite so big. So I'm going to scale it maybe line it up goes well with the scene and then I'm going to Think about how to deal with these edges, right? You have a hard edge there, there's ice, there's flowing water behind it, I like that. I can take its opacity down and I can decide, okay, I wanna rough cut it here where that big chunk of ice is coming out. And take my opacity back up and then that out. And that's cutting it out with the two pixel feather. That works pretty well. Looks like one is in front of the other for sure. And then this is going to be a softer transition and probably is going to be something I have to figure out.